She has been invited to several international conferences to speak and lecture. She is an intelligent teacher, author and she is a mentor to the younger generation. Please subscribe to YYCI TV on YouTube to watch her amazing videos. You will be glad you did. This is just to let you know that there is nothing too difficult for you to do. If we can change, then everything around us will change. Without wisdom, you can't really create wealth. We are in the world of creativity. So welcome to Yes You Can International United Kingdom, a home of discovery, development, and demonstration, a home of love, relationship, and family, a place of mastering mindset for transformation and building deeper relationship. YYCI Blueprint is time because it's time for everything. And now it's time for youth, youth leaders, and youth and young families to be transformed, to be trained, inspired, in part, mentoring, and also motivating them to do something great for their lives and for the future, and empowering and educating them. Yes, you can. International's mission is to engage the youth mind positively and take positive action to help them to focus and not to be distracted and to get better and better and let them know they have everything in them to be successful and fulfilling their purpose. And once they believe in themselves and follow all their development, they can also help others to get better. And that is why we are established. We arrange master classes like this one we are doing today, workshops, conferences and seminars monthly. Our youth need us as a leader. Our youth need us to guide them, to lead them, to mentor them, to save them from destruction, misguided and confusion. Our youth need us to listen to them and give them opportunities, platforms to express themselves, their concerns, their ideas, missions, dreams, aspirations, and vision to network both locally, nationally, and globally, and to empower them to do something great for their lives and future. To reposition themselves, knowing who they are and their why and purpose. Our youth need mentors, coaches, adversaries, guidance. They need us to lead the way and lay example for them to follow. So these are all our activities that we do with them. And also we have so many books we've written. Some of them, some of our youth have written together, all our, uh, some of our youth, and some of them they've done it individually, including my own that I've collaborated with other authors. So now, without wasting any time, I would like to welcome every one of you on this platform. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for willingness to want to learn because mindset is everything. And for you to improve your mindset, to increase and to re renew your mindset, you need to start still co continue to learn. Mindset has two ways. We have the fixed mindset and the growth mindset. If you have the growth mindset, that is why you are here on this platform, because you want to add more valuable knowledge, wisdom to your mindset. So you are all welcome. We've set up two days for this masterclass, today and Monday, which is today's second. Monday is the 5th of June. So join us as we continue to learn together, share together, grow together and impart into other people's life. So allow me to welcome our first great speaker. It's a great leader in the society. Honorable Ross Keith Swine from Singapore is the leadership consultant, coach, trainer, speaker, podcaster, CEO of Soul Inspired Leadership PTE Limited. But then we have more. 
to tell you about this wonderful great leader. Sir Ross is also a dynamic speaker, broadcaster with outstanding skills in communication, presentation, training, and interpersonal relations. He works internationally with his projects and encompassing many diverse cultural background. Throughout the years, Saros has developed a growing desire to put an ongoing emphasis in bringing more soul into business. And he believes that the most effective leaders stay through to their authenticity by being so inspired. And it starts by being able to lead yourself. More so, more projects encompassing many diverse cultural backgrounds. Throughout the year, Ross has developed a growing desire to put an ongoing emphasis. I think I'm just repeating myself there. Okay, but before I let him on to start speaking to us, let me also um, show with you, if you can just check this slide, you will see his contact. Please contact him if you need more questions or more answers to your questions, more solutions to your problem, and you want to know more about what he does and his company. So let me also say this quickly. 2008, just a few days before COVID. <laughs> I hope you remember this. <laughs> I, I was given an opportunity to travel to Dubai for a leadership conference. Here I met Sir Ross Swine, very humble man, but a great leader in the society. So I was opportuned to share the same platform with him, even though I was nervous because that was my first <laughs> public, international public speaking. <laughs> but I did the little I can do, and that was my best that time. <laughs> after the mess, after, after my speech, I was able to chat with him, and he imparted one thing in me that has helped me till today. He said, Elizabeth, Continue the way you are delivering your speech because you are speaking from your heart and you are being an authentic. Never forget that thing. It really, really inspires me. And <laughs> I'm so glad after three years, I'm inviting the same man, the same leader to come and speak to our heart today. So I'll first of all, let him have his slides. Okay, mm -hmm. sir. So the, the stage is yours. Right now, just get my slides organized. Okay, sir. I'm IT challenge, just to anyone who's listening. <laughs> it takes me a bit to get all this organized. We are all learning, sir. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, we're always learning. That's it. So, okay. Look, thanks. Thanks, Elizabeth. And yes, I do remember that well. Three years ago now, three ago, three years and a couple of months. Yeah. Remember it well. So, look, thanks everyone for listening. And what I'm about to chat to you about today is. Well, the, the the subject matter and the what well, the topic is this transformative leadership, and the point I want to be talking about transformative is just leadership. It's just it's just evolving. Transform it means you're transforming your life. Elizabeth already mentioned that just a minute ago. It's being have a having a growth mindset. It's it's continually moving forward. So, and I'm going to talk a bit about that in the next forty minutes or so. But it's about leading self. All good leaders, all great leaders lead themselves. If they can't do lead themselves, they're not very good leaders of others. It always starts with yourself. It's no difference. 
if you want to love others, you've got to love yourself first. If you can't love yourself first, you won't truly love other people. You think you do, but you don't. It all comes back to everything starts with you. So what we're going to be talking about, some key leadership behaviours, and these are, these, are, these are I do with executives. So the leadership behaviours when you're leading a, a team of people. But like similarly, it's, they have to do that themselves. They have to do this within themselves so they can lead themselves to lead other people. So we'll talk just a few. What leading yourself entails, but we'll touch on that. We, we could spend days on this, but we're, to, we're talking 40, 40 minutes, so that's 45 minutes or so. And how your strengths can become your weakness. So just a little idea, we did, and that touches on some of the behaviours, but that's, that's okay. It's, it's just understanding it. Nothing wrong with it, just you need to understand it and how you create a positive impact on people and their development. And that starts with creating a positive impact on yourself. It's giving yourself the right message. It, it all, as I said, you'll be sick of hearing me say it. It all starts with yourself. You can't be negative towards yourself and then expect to be positive to other people. And it's funny, people over the years will think back if they mention if they mention your name, for example, someone mentions your name to someone else two years after they met you, they'll only ever remember you for how you made them feel. So it's your choice. Do you want them to make, to make them feel good about you when your name is mentioned or wince in pain and, and with a nervous twitch? That's, and it's only up to you how you connect with people. So it's, it's creating positive impact on people and their development. And, and if you're creating positive impact on people, that will help them in their development. It always does. And you plan to grow better yourself. And I've got a, one little activity I'll get you to be doing over these few minutes, and we'll just see. And there's something you should be looking at and you can continue to do throughout your life in a couple of different ways. But in essence, it can form how you lead your life. So we're talking about transforming the leader of today, yourself. You're all leaders of self. It's how do you transform yourself into tomorrow? So when you look at when we look at tomorrow and 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 what it was, leadership over a period of time, nothing's really changed. Behaviors are just the more hot. What's changing is people are getting a bit more sensitive to other other behaviors. I see that happening a bit more. So I'm just glossing over that. Um, so you just so the key is it's connecting, and these are overriding little views. We're going to get into it in a minute. But it's connecting with people with with an up, in an uplifting way. As I said to you, they'll only ever remember you for how you made them feel. Now, if you if, if you made them feel depressed, that's how they remember you. So they'll feel depressed whenever they hear your name. Now, that if you want that to happen, then good luck to you. But deep down, I. I don't think you do. And I, and I, look, I deal with uh, a lot of managers. I don't call them leaders. I'll call them managers sometimes because I, I'm asked by their employer to actually do some remedial coaching because they can be quite hard to work for, to put it mildly. And, and at the end of the day, when you get, get them to reach into their inner self, into their soul, no one wants to be nasty from their soul. They only want to be nasty from their head. It's the head telling them they, they can be nasty and be better than that person next door or, or compete with that person next door, whatever they want to do. But in essence, when you break it down, no one wants to be nasty and they all feel, they all feel as though they want to have a positive impact on people. A lot don't, uh, or some don't, but, and deep down, they don't try to even set out to have a negative impact. So keep that in mind. We move on. So I'll, I'll go to the next one, I think. So right, what we've got here. Now where am I just move this over? So as I said, start with leading yourself. And it's your choice. It's no one else's. To be a leader of yourself and to be who you are is your choice. 
do you want do you want to create a positive impact in in your with your life in someone else's and there again it's a positive thing if you're creating a positive impact on someone else it reflects from you so therefore you're feeling positive so if you want to feel positive and uplifting within yourself that flows onto others so it it all goes hand in hand it can't be one and the other's the opposite But it's still a choice. It's still a choice. Your choice. It's like it's like a simple thing. I can't tell you, go off and be happy. You've got to tell yourself, I'm going to be happy. Whatever's happening in my life, I choose to be happy. Hell, I can't tell you to be that. I can only tell myself to be happy. So anyway, that's I digress, but that's in essence what we're talking about here today. So it's being connected with your inner self and it not just being your, continually in your headspace. It's funny, when we're born, we listen to our inner selves. We don't know that, but we are. And we, we do that for, till we're probably seven, eight, nine, ten years of age. And as we get a bit older, we start, because we're being taught at school to think, to do exams, to learn information, think with your head, use your brain, son. Oh, I heard that a few times when I was a kid. But that's the, that's the trouble. We then convert everyone from using their inner self and their and how they feel more to how they think. And thinking, people don't like to think generally anyway because it reminds them of exams and gives them a headache. But either way, we, we've got to stay out of our headspace a little bit. Yes, we've got to do that to analyse things, but we've got to move back into our, into our inner self. And that's where we're happy. We're in our inner self, our inner peace. I'll move on. We can talk about a bit more as we go. So there again, I've said this before, and I'll say it to everyone I coach. Being a giver of positive energy, not a taker. But you want to give it, not sit there and take it on. Yes, you can go to a, a conference and, and you can listen to me for these 40 minutes and feel motivated. So you, you, you're taking on the motivation and to feel more positive. But then... The key is then you keep it and then use it with everyone else. But Elizabeth said the right thing. You're you're on here listening to what Elizabeth has to say, to what I have to say, and what everyone else has to say on this on this platform. And you're doing it because you've probably got a you've got most likely have a growth mind, mindset. In that in itself is positive energy. So you've already got it. You just might want a bit of topping up. Sometimes we all just want a bit of topping up. The fuel and the, the tank and the car's half full. I've got to go a bit of a journey. I'll do a top up. That's all you're doing. That's fine. But there's fuel in the tank. There's energy in the tank. And, and in that, what and one of the things that gives you the energy in the tank is it's reflection. It's taking time out to be with yourself. And in essence, look, and in some respects, oh, I want to have a way to say this. As you get older, you, and not saying young people don't do this, but as you get older, you tend to do this a bit more. You become a bit more reflective. Um, well, certainly I was. I'm far more reflective now than what I was when I was 20. Um, they were short, sharp, quick reflections back then, but now they're a bit longer and more circumspect. But it's taking that time out to be with yourself. And I, there's going to be an activity I'm going to get you to think about later on, and then that that can help you then by taking time out to do that, and then quite often reflect on it. But being with yourself, look, you can't be lonely in this life if your best friend's you, and that's who it should be, because it all starts with you. If you're not fr a friend with yourself, in other words, you don't love yourself, you're very hard. It's it's just about well, it is impossible to love anyone else and to be a really good friend of anyone else. You'll be a friend, but not, not deep friend. The deep connections start with the deep connection you have with yourself. So the real you comes from within, and I keep saying these same things over and over again, but it's just the most important things in your own life as you go through life to lead yourself. Don't let others lead your life. Lead it yourself. That's not to ignore other people and just say, oh, I'm going to be 
I'm going to be selfish and this is my why I think and this to heck with anyone else. That's not your heart speaking. That's your head speaking. But your heart wants to connect with people. It wants to help people. That's what we do. Heart to heart, that's the connection I'm talking about. Connecting with brain to brain ends up in a, quite often in a, in a debate. Well, that's fun for a debate and for, it goes for an hour, but not how to live your life. You can't spend your whole life debating with everyone. It's connecting with people. Now, so the real you is within you. Your thinking, your brain provides the tactics, the where, what, and how. Coming from your, your gut, the real in your heart, your soul, because you want to do something. Oh, I want to, I want to travel to Scotland, for example. I just want to go there. Whatever, whatever nice memory you have of being there before, or the nice memories you want to have by when you when you get there by spending time fishing in a lake or some a, a lock up there. I don't know, but that's fine. That's what tells you to go there. Your heart, then your brain tells you how the best way to get there what to do necessarily when you get there a bit more and just how the best, best where the best fishing is, et cetera. That's your tactics. But what really drives you is the want to go. It comes usually from the heart. Or you may want to go because someone told you that's a good place to fish. You're going because you love fishing. But someone else's brain told you the tactic is go to, go to Loch Lomond or somewhere. That's where the fish are. That's the, that's the difference. That's the variance. But it's your heart that's the biggest driver. And so all the good leaders internalize and lead from within to lead out. They lead, the out part's just the tactics. From within, that's where they really lead from. That's the authenticity. That's, what, that's their driver because that's their purpose. It all comes from within. You, you'll all, and not when it comes to your purpose, it will come to you one day. You may not even discover it fully till you're 40. But then again, if you're 23 and you're just starting a family, that's probably your purpose at that time. So you do have a purpose. Just don't look for the big grandio, big daddy of a purpose when you're 25. It, you may have it. It may come, but don't beat yourself up if it doesn't come just then. It will come to you. You'll, it'll attract to you. Just watch the signals. But, but when leaders lead with purpose, they, they, they internalise and they lead from that to lead out. All the good leaders I've worked with, that's one of the, that's the main thing in common they have. And when they do that, they do all the other things. They connect with people with empathy. They do, the list goes on. They communicate in the right way all because they're leading from within. They always take a proactive stance, always looking for proactive. And that's no different to a growth, very similar to a growth mindset. It's look, it's, yes, we have to react to things. If the, the building's burning down, you've got to react. The proactive one is, though, you've done some fire drills and you know the best way to get out. You see, that's the proactive stance. The reactive is, oh, the building's burning now. Now I put my proactive stance in the play. But you're always looking for the proactive way. You're always looking for the growth in what you learn. You don't sit back and wait for the world to dictate your life. You get out and dictate your own life. Sure, you've got to bend with the breeze and go where the stream, go with the flow of the stream, but the, the stream is still going towards the ocean. That's the purpose. So just exactly the way the stream's going to go, you may not know. And don't worry about that. But you are going down the stream, not trying to swim back up it. So being a leader of self, stepping out and, and starts there again. Add, these are just simple things. Um, one of them is getting out of your comfort zone. As there again, getting into the growth mindset. If you want to have a fixed mindset, that's where you stay. You stay where everything is comfortable. You don't put yourself under pressure. Oh, I, I can always do this. So I can, I'll do this again. So I always do it. That's right. It's easy to do. I'll do that. Not challenging yourself. So stepping out. And it doesn't have, you don't have to step out with a massive jump. You put your toe out there and just wriggle it and keep going forward. 
whatever best suits you. Some people like to jump the Grand Canyon when they get out, as getting out their comfort zone. Others like a little skip. That's it. That's fine. As long as you're going forward. And when you look at that, 80% is good enough. Not having to get it right the first time. I deal with this. a lot of people and they sometimes procrastinate a lot of times. That's because they stick within their comfort zone. And they don't, they want everything to be perfect going forward. So they sit and wait and ponder, I've got to get this right. I've got to be perfect. Don't wait for things to be perfect. Just 80% is good enough. That's corporate speak, 80%. But generally, that's roughly it. If 80% is pretty good enough, get moving and work out the other 20% on your way. That's stepping out of the comfort zone. It's being a little uneasy every day. If you're being a little uneasy every day, you're making progress. You're making progress. And, and it's not a fast fact of saying, oh, I, I want to be uneasy. It's, it's just being comfortable with it. You can't stop it. You can't stop that. You just want to, don't want to take it out, that to take over your life, but you're just comfortable with just on the side, there's a bit of uneasiness there, a little bit of anxiety because I've stepped out of my comfort zone. A bit like what Elizabeth said a minute ago when she, when she presented in Dubai. She was just stepping out of the zone, right? She didn't wait to, to she become a perfect presenter. She may have never done that. But the only way to learn and grow from it is you go and do it. And truth was, she didn't have to change much at all. But the only way to find that out is to go and do it. So that's 80% is good enough. And it's that seizing that opportunity, as I said, it's part of it. Don't sit back and wait. For the, everyone sees the opportunity. Oh, I won't go there. I'm the only one that sees this opportunity. Well, I won't go. Why do everyone sees it? Well, that's, that's, it's not really an opportunity anymore. It's just the way everyone does things. Sometimes opportunities to do something in your life, you could be first to get there to do it. That's okay. Then get back to the 80%. Get out of your comfort zone. And one other simple thing that I find when you, it's, it's a bit of reflection that can happen at any time of your life, is it's what's positive, it's doing positive things when no one is there to watch you. I just, it's a bit of a misspell on the slide by looks, but it's like doing something when no one's watching you. I don't mean go and rob a bank and hopefully no one's seeing you. It's doing the positive things because you're doing it for yourself. It's no other person's watching you, but you're watching yourself. That's key. It's, I'm doing this for myself. I'm going to do it. I'm not going to wait till my wife comes home or, or my children come home or my teacher's watching me. So I do something good. So they go, oh, very good, Ross. Very good job. Really pleased. Now you're doing this for yourself. All good leaders do little things for themselves. They don't care about anyone watching. They're doing it for themselves and what they and to fulfill their purpose. They don't wait for an audience. Now, a little activity, which we're going to start on, and it's just starting on it here. It's, and I'm not going to do it now, but this is what you can do later on, right? If we're doing a longer presentation in a room and we can talk about it, I'd be what I want you to do is write down. In bullet points on how you want to be remembered as a person. It's a simple thing. If I said, if I, if I, like, I'm, like I, I'm talking to Elizabeth, and I said to Elizabeth, now, how do you want to be remembered? Or how do you want people to talk about you? So if I met someone that knows you in three years or even tomorrow, doesn't matter when, what do you want them to be saying? What would you like them to be saying? about you to me in other words how do you want to be remembered remembering people only remember you for how you made them feel not how you made them think they only remember you how you made them feel so you write that down how you'd like to be described by other people to describe you when they're talking about you with not not you're not in the room you're not there you're nowhere near the place and someone's telling someone else about you. What do you want them to be saying? 
And, uh, and remember, as I said, they only ever say things how you made them feel. They might say, oh, Ross, he hasn't, doesn't have much hair and what's left is grey. They might say that as a bit of a joke, but if it doesn't say much, they'll be saying how I've made them felt over the times we've connected. That's what they rely on. So that's what I want you to do. Have a think about it. Take some time. And it might take you weeks before you get it right. Don't write war and peace, just a few bullet points. It's only what someone says to you, says to someone else in a few points. Think about that. You can also do it. That's as a person. You can do that with your partner. How do you, right, you do the same thing. How do you want your partner to describe you as a husband? How do you want your partner to describe you as a wife? Whatever. How do you want to be described as a parent? How do you want your children to be describing you as a father or a mother when they're 16? Remember, they'll only ever say how you make them feel. They may say, oh, they're good. They gave me the money to go to university. Full stop. I don't think you'll be happy with that. <laughs> generally speaking, but, and, and no one would be, right? It's the key is how you make them feel. So these are the little things you can do in life. You write down, this is how I want my son or daughter to describe me when they're 16, for example. Right, that's, so leave those thoughts, and these are the types of actions. We'll talk a bit about it as we go forward. Now, I'll go back one thing on this. Um, at the end of the day, it doesn't happen by chance. Like, if you if you want if you want someone to describe you as a a person who has a lot of empathy and is very warm and all this, it, you don't just keep living the life you're living and hope that that's how they're going to describe you. Maybe that's the life you've already been living, so it's not a problem. But you'll know that. The key is. What have I got to do every time, every day, every minute of the day, every day of the week, every week of the year, day in, day out? What have I got to do in order for someone, when I connect with those people or to be a father, for example, what have I got to do day in and day out in order for my 15-year-old son to describe me the way I want to be described? What do I have to do? See, that's leading yourself you're now starting to reflect and deciding how I'm going to live my life. How am I going to behave? I'm transforming my life because it evolves as I go forward. Because it doesn't just happen. People think of, oh, yeah, I'd like to be described that way. And I have this chat with executives, uh, leaders of business, and they go, yeah, I'd like to be. So what do you do about it? Oh, I just do stuff. <laughs> Like, it doesn't happen by chance. Then they get into exactly what they've got to do. They think they've got to do, behave in a way for their staff to describe them in a certain way, for example. And they go, oh, that's going to be harder. It's a bit of a challenge. I said, I know. But that's the only way they're going to be describing in that way. Now, they're all good leaders of self. Just get on with it. That's what I've got to do. That's what I do. That's the way I behave. That's what the way I've got to behave. Most of them are probably already doing it because they're, that's why they're good leaders. But you get back to how you want to be described as a person. What have I got to do for people? Do, do as a person every day in order for people to describe me the way I want to be described. That's the key. Behaviour. It doesn't happen by chance. So. In that, we're going to just talk about a couple of behaviours that I, there's the several leadership behaviours. These are just how you lead yourself. Just a couple that I find cause the biggest problems with people and each other. And the interpersonal paradox traits. When I, you, you remember I mentioned before about strength and weaknesses, that your strength can be a weakness. That's okay. And I'll explain what I mean. Let's look at communication, how you communicate with people, because we that's all we do, communicate with people. 
it's an interpersonal skill. So what you'd like to do with people, and we'd all probably say, I'd like that, to build a cooperative relationship with others, be respectful of other people, self-esteem, yet be authentic in my communication. In other words, respect other people's feelings, but at the same time, say what, I, what needs to be said. And I explain that a bit more. So, so you've got a paradox, like it's, we've got a, a seesaw. Up one end of the, well, a scale, up one end of the scale is Frank, someone who's very blunt. Now, we all know people are very blunt because they believe you've got to just tell people as it is. They need, they deserve the right to know. But, and that, and they're not wrong. That's the tendency to be straightforward, direct to the point and forthright. It's a, it's a dynamic behaviour within, within, from, within, from within. Then they get the people at the other end of the scale, the other end of the spectrum. They're the diplomatic people. The tendency to state things in a tactful manner, always trying not to upset people. They're, doing, they're trying to be tactful. And see, when you get either end of the scale, that's it, one end, like it's just like a strength. And that's fine. But you don't put all the energy in being frank or you don't put all your energy in being diplomatic. Because what happens is when, you dip, when you're putting it all in being diplomatic, you quite often don't tell people what they need to know. You just don't tell them because you don't upset them. So when those people need your advice, you don't say anything. <laughs> or if they put, keep saying to you, keep, pestering you tell me please in the end the pressure we all go through this it's human behavior everyone has it right the pressure of the build-up when you're an extremely diplomatic person for example of not of trying to be diplomatic becomes so strong you can blow up and go ah well look this is what it is and then you become quite blunt at that person bite their head off then, then you go back to being totally diplomatic. Diplomatic people go, "Poor, oh, what happened to them?" They <laughs> go, "Well, what happened?" Totally out of character. We all now, you all know people who do that. They suddenly go out of character under pressure. We all do it. It's a psychological behaviour that we all have. It's just a question of how we can reduce that behaviour. So I'm just talking about these things. So I'm trying to get you to be a bit more aware of about how you do some of these how you behave some of these ways right and i'm not telling someone to be if they're per se very diplomatic or at the other end they're so blunt and direct all they do is upset people 365 days of the year and people don't want to go near them because oh, they're going to upset them and yell at me or do something tell me some information i don't want to hear or rah, 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 whatever it is right See, that's up, up the other end and i deal up i deal a lot with those people in management who keep telling staff and very blunt at it do this or else, blah, 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 or what the stupid job you've done there. See, that's not a not a good message. They needed to hear the message, but in a better way. So the key is what I'm saying here. If you find yourself being up one end of, the, of, of a behaviour, and I'll cover a couple more for you just today. We've got a bit of time for that. It's just the key is I don't stop the person from telling the desire to tell people as it is, but I just train them on telling it in a diplomatic way. That's all. You, just, you don't have to use blunt words. If they need to be told something, say it in a way that doesn't destroy their self-esteem. You just still say it, but in a diplomatic way. See, I coach people. If I upset all my clients, they don't want it, they don't want me to be a coach. They don't even employ me after one visit. They don't come back here, Ross. I'd be a failure. <laughs> I'd have no clients. So I upset them so much, they don't want to take it. But if I don't tell them anything, they're, I'm useless. I don't provide any value as well. They, they sack me as well because I'm not giving them any value. So I've got to tell them what they need to hear, but in a way that builds their self-esteem, not reduces it. So you're pulling people up, not pulling them down. You're pumping a tyre up. You're pumping their tyre up, not letting out the tyre. So you don't have to let out the tyre just because you're giving them news they need to hear it just takes a bit of practice a bit of will and desire and you'll be right
that's what I'm a coach for, I suppose, and I help people through that. So you need to be saying, so a balanced communicator, and you can't get it 50-50, but you just need to be balanced in the way you do it, right? Is that, yes, I've got to say what needs to be said, but I've just got to say it in a way that's constructive and respectful. That's all. Because at the end of the day, I'll go back there. At the end of the day, if you say something that's totally blunt, people don't listen to you. And, and, if, and if they're physically in the room, they're not listening to what you're saying. So whatever you're saying and believing it, they, they need to hear that message, they're not getting it. Physically, they're getting it, but emotionally, they're not. They've blocked it out. But they just switch off. So the key is to deliver that honest message, but in a way that supports you, puts the person, not deflates them. That's forthright diplomacy. That's all you got to have. Just bring the two sub, the, the opposites, and do them both together. So it becomes a 50-50, not 100% of the time I'm, I'm a blunt and a pain in the backside, or 100% I'm so diplomatic I don't say anything. Now, when you're doing that as a communicator, I'll throw this in as well. We Most times when you're listening to someone, you're listening to respond. In other words, as they're talking, you're thinking, what am I going to say next? It's subconscious quite often, can be conscious. In a debate, it can be conscious. But in a subconsciously, we do it. The key is just listen to the person. Don't worry about what you say next. Listen to what they're saying. Listen to the words. And so sometimes it's what they, it's what they don't say is the message. Now, be clear on that. It's what sometimes what people aren't telling you is the message or it's the way they express the words is the message. So if you're not listening to it properly, you're not getting the real message. So you try to practice these things because you're trying to improve your communication. Yes, I want to do things in a way that uplifts people, and I'll, but I need to tell them what they need to hear. But at the moment, I'm listening, right? And so to listen, I, to practice that I'm really listening, then when they finish saying something, repeat it back in a way, paraphrase it. So what you're telling me, Elizabeth, is you, this, this and this. Is that what you're saying to me? Yes, it is, Ross. Ah, good. I understand. See, that's how... And it does a lot of things in your life. Remember I said, people listen, people only describe you how you, how you make them feel. The mere fact that you're listening to someone and they, understand, and they know that you're listening because you've just confirmed it with a paraphrase, they feel good about that. It makes them feel important. We all like to feel important. So there's, there's a, a behaviour that helps one description, so I'm sure you've all got communication in there somewhere, in some form, and how you want to be described. So just little tricks to keep that just help you be the best person, create the best positive impact when you're communicating with people, which we're doing all day. Now, interpersonal trait, another one is about opinions. To be certain, the tendency to feel confident about your own opinions or being up the other end of the spectrum is being open and reflective. Now, why I'm saying this one, because this becomes, if you're so certain about everything around you, right up one end of the scale, then that's what's lobbing you into a fixed mindset. Because why do I have to look at anything else? My view of this is perfect. I believe that is right. And everyone else obviously wrong. Whoever follows the other path's wrong. Maybe they are. But if you stick so fixed up one end of the certain of the opinion, then you, you run the risk of being having a fixed mindset. Correct. And you got the other end. If you're so open, reflective that the tendency to view every different viewpoint because you want to grow. And the trouble is if you're so open and don't have anything fixed, you'll never have any opinion about anything. you just float through. <laughs> you'll never have an opinion. So you'll never take a position on anything. So you won't go anywhere because you don't have a fixed opinion that's going to drive you a bit. Or opinion, at this, right at this moment, that's what I believe so that's going to drive me. So, so you, you can't have that either. 
it's about a mixture. It's like, yes, I'm pretty good with my, I'm pretty strong with my opinions. I think they come come from good, good from good viewpoints. But I know if I keep my eyes and ears open, I can improve on that. See, that's that's all I'm asking you to do. So you've got to ask yourself in reflecting here, are my opinions too easily changed or, or they don't change at all? So the key is to just explore different viewpoints and formulate conclusions without being fixed in your opinion. But you have an opinion. The key is you have, so you just take a, like, take a minute. What do I got here? I've just got to see my slide. You take a minute. Consider where you are. Are you a fixed mindset or, or a growth mindset when you're just looking at and reviewing? What do you do? Do you tend to be stuck on fixed opinions? Or do you tend to be total, totally liquid? You don't have any opinions because you're too, you always know that you can get better and you don't fix on anything. Make a stand. You've got to make stands at times. But the key is you've got to understand that, yes, I am confident in this about this issue or about myself, whatever, but I know I can always get better. I know I can always learn something more. That's why, and that's why you're here listening to me at the moment. You have a belief that I can always learn something more, which is good. So that's there again, just kept touching on that growth mindset, which is what the opinions are. You tend to see the your levels of intelligence. Where is it? I've got here. Skill, talent, success has the capacity to grow. And that's always got to grow. You believe that there are numerous stepping, and there are, there are numerous stepping stones to, to improvement. Heck, I, I look at, I'm getting a bit long in the tooth, as you can see by my gray hair or what's lack or what, or the lack of it, as I keep saying. But what I, but the, I can always believe I can grow and learn something every day. I don't have all the answers. I, I'm always looking to learn something every day. To me, that's important. And it gives you, it gives you energy and, and enjoyment in life. If you think I've learned everything that needs to know about life, man, what a boring rest, rest of your life you're going to have. You've got nothing to learn. How boring is that? The fact you've got the enthusiasm to have the growth mindset because you're looking, always looking to something better, better way to do this stuff. That gives you enthusiasm, gives you positive energy. That's fun. And one other thing, when it comes to your employment, I work with a lot of big companies and small companies as well, but there's a lot of companies now that they, they look at whether you've got a growth or a fixed mindset. And they'll, they'll promote people who are showing skills of, of a growth mindset. If they see growing mindsets fixed, they're the people who don't grow in their career. Because at the moment, the world changes too quickly to be fixed for too long. Like if you're running a 100 meter, 100 meter race at the Olympics, you only got to stop for half a second. You've, the world's gone and finished. You're still halfway through. That's fine, right? That's, that's, but that's how the world's going at the moment. Even a few years ago, even if you're running a marathon or an ultra marathon, you stop for five minutes, it's only five minutes. Man, there's people running past you and leaving you in the distance. You've got to keep going. That's the growth mindset. It's keep growing. Otherwise, you're going to be stopping and sitting on the pavement in an ultra marathon. Damn hard to get up and start again and catch up with the crowd or pass the crowd if you want to win. I'll go one more paradox trait. It's, and that, there again, it's, it's very similar because it comes, it all sits around the growth mindset. It's decision making. And it comes back to that trust lead from within as well. It's a bit of a combo. So decision making. So do you, so you get, get people who make decisions very logically, their logical mind at work? Or do you use, in other words, do you examine the facts, look at the data? Yep, yep. Then you make a very controlled decision. Or do you, up the other end, I just follow my gut. If my gut's telling me that's the way I've got to go, then that's it. Now, good leaders of self do both. 
they follow their gut, but they use the the analyt analytical ability they have on the data and the facts and the figures just to guide that gut to the to the spot they want to go. That's the guts telling you I want to do. I want. I love fishing, and I and I've got to be. I want to go to Scotland and fish and have a holiday there. But the data is going to tell them which lock they're going to go to. How they're going to get there. That's that's the difference. Is is you use both. All the really good, all the good leaders use their gut. Otherwise, they, if they wait for the information, the data to tell them where to go, it's too late, because they're reading someone else. Data is past tense. It's history. It's a historical view of what's happened before. So if it's already happened, and you want to get the data to tell you, should I step into this market? There's already too many people there, because you're waiting for the data of all those people to tell you that's the way I got to go. <laughs> too late. See, that's why the good leaders use their gut. And it's no different in life. If you want to do something for yourself, don't wait for other people to tell you. And you don't want to listen to them anyway, because it's, it's not their purpose. It's your purpose, not theirs. You do, you, you do it yourself. It's your gut, your purpose. You do it. Yes, you might use them for some analytical data, but not whether you do it or not. It's like someone saying, well, don't go to Scotland fishing. I don't like fishing, so why should you like fishing? Well, how stupid is that? What? I like fishing. I'm going. I'm not, not going because you say don't go there. because you don't. And in the essence, what's driving it, that is because you don't like fishing. See, purpose clash. Why do I listen to that idiot? Right? Why am I listening to that person? You listen to your gut for purpose. And you make decisions on that because that's where you're headed. Just use the information of others as data. You take it under consideration, but it doesn't drive your purpose. Good leaders, it doesn't drive their, their some of their brave actions of taking a risk, getting out of the comfort zone. It just may be guiding them a little bit. That's all. So these are sort of things you'd ask yourself. I'll go back to what am I done? Going back. So it's... Am I mindful of how, how I make my bigger decision? This is when you reflect. Do I overanalyze things? Just come through this. Or do I use my gut and I don't think about anything else and just blunder on? And there again, you can you can fall over the Grand Canyon because you want to jump it. <laughs> but you don't lose the data, say that the bottom of the Grand Canyon is quite a quite a, a, a big fall. If you don't get it right, then maybe you should have looked at some of the data. See, you've got to look at a bit of data somewhere. That's what keeps you alive sometimes. But there again, if you want the journey to be going the journey you want to go on, that comes from the gut. And it's no different to someone who's who's invented, and I deal with a lot of startups and and new new tech startups, particularly a lot of here in Singapore. Um, and you, you get that bright young people with some ideas. Yes, that's all logical sort of information to drive that. The idea is going to drive it, but it comes back to what started them in the first place. What is at the end of the day when they think about it, it's not what they've built, but what's what started them to have the desire to build what they've done is that desire to help someone, to help help someone in the marketplace that has a need. If you're supplying cartons of milk for people it's helping people to drink milk like there that comes from within you that's a desire i want to help people drink more milk whatever it is right now i'm going to i now i'm going to use my head to build with based on other data to build the best milk dispersing machine in the world whatever it is right see that's fine but that's not the bit that what drives you is the beginning is what i'm getting at it's the purpose that starts you to get off out of your bed every morning and start doing something. Then your actions then become more thinking actions. That's okay. I hope that makes sense to you. But, so when you get back to these behaviours, it's all about balance. I'm getting back to it, right? It's now, what have I got here? Being balanced 
And there again, as I mentioned before, that when you're up one end too much and you don't balance yet that behaviour, it under pressure you flip to the opposite. I I, I know you've got a, a saying, and they have it in Australia where I come from. Um, I know they have it in Britain as well. Is that sometimes they'll say your bark is worse than their bite. You've heard people say that. It's an old old English saying, English speaking saying. That person's bark's worse than their bite. That's what that this is. It means they bark, they're very blunt, blah, 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 blah. And when you put them under pressure, they come meek and mild. They don't fight at all. All right, because they don't, they when put under pressure to give a real, a real opinion sometimes, and this is what happens. And I do this with executives. I've had executives who, who are having problems because they're upsetting too many people. So they go to a meeting and then they become meek and mild because they they sit on their hands so they don't <laughs> express themselves and they don't say anything because they know if they say it, they'll only upset everyone. See, their bark's now becoming, it's putting them under pressure. So so they sometimes they don't even go to the meetings. I, I upset people. I'm getting into trouble. I, I, I can't do this. So that's the point I'm going. Because they're not balanced, it causes them to be the opposite. Or if someone's saying something in the meeting and they have to say something, say, oh, no, you're okay. They don't say what they normally say. Or sometimes people say, geez, their bark is a lot worse than their, I mean, their, their, their bite is a lot worse than their bark. In other words, that's the opposite. So they don't bark much. But man, can they bite when they want to? In other words, they'll bite your head off. They say very little to you. Then you've got them under so much pressure to say something. Man, are they blunt. <laughs> See, because they haven't practiced how to say it properly. They're up one end. They're under pressure. So they just explode it out. Now, you'll you'll see things in all people's lives that you know. And there's, there are others. I could have gone through many other behaviors that people explode. Suddenly you're very nice and suddenly explode. Someone who's the martyr, that's always, always, oh, I'll help you, I'll help you there, I'll help you here. And then suddenly one day they go, ah, no, no, I'm helping you. That's because they're under pressure because they help you so many times and they under pressure because they can't help you this day. Then they just blurt, bite your head off. So I can't help you. There's several behaviors that you've got to do. But anyway, you can search them out. But you, um, and I, it comes under what they call a Harrison uh, performance. So if you, Harrison, balanced behavior traits if you google that you'd get to somewhere where you'll get to harrison behavioral traits it's by dr harrison that's it's, it's all his study and work that i'm quoting so the point i'm trying to get here is that the key is just about balance it's trying to balance you so when you're blurting out or whether you're or whether you're too meek and mild just build yourself up that's the key it's building yourself up to be balanced and and I can and I can tell you now, um, people like people being balanced. We don't like people who are unbalanced. And like um, it's like, I guess another saying is, "Oh, we got to watch out for so and so today. You got to got to walk on eggshells here today. You got to work, you know, because oh, they're all a bit grumpy. It's like we don't like it. One day." One day they're grumpy, and the next day they're patting you on the back saying, job, well done, Ross. See, that's that means they're very unbalanced in the behaviour. Depending on what's driving them, they flip from one end of that behavioural trait to the other in their communication. The key is being a little bit more circumspect in how you do it. So, in essence, in finishing up, all I want to say now, next, just... Go back to that description and look at yourself and, and then redo it, whatever you want to do. How do I want people to describe me? Then you've got to look at that and say, what behaviours have I got to do? What have I got to do every day when I connect with this person in order for them to describe me this way? If I want people to describe me as an empathetic person who understands and listens to me, what have I got to do? Well, you've got to understand, you've got to listen, you've got to, all these things. These are the things you've got to do. That's what how you look at your life. How do I want to be as a, described as a husband? What have I got to do as a husband in order to be described the way I want to be described? And any other thing that you want to make, make out and how you want to be considered. 
that's the last thing we're going to leave with you. And to everyone, be a good leader of self. Just takes a little bit of discipline and a just strength from your heart and a belief in yourself that you can be the best person you can be and the person you can want to be described as being you can be you can do that that's how you want to be described thank you thank you so much sir thank you so much we really 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 have learned a lot on the your leadership on the your mentorship you've trained us today and I uh, really, really appreciate you, sir, for your time to have spent with us this morning or this afternoon, this evening, wherever all our audience are calling from. Yeah. I want to say thank you, sir, for your time. And I'm My looking pleasure, forward Elizabeth. to you yesterday. The most important thing that I've learned, I've learned a lot, but because of time, I won't be able to yeah. break it <laughs> up. But <laughs> one thing, that you started with, which is very important as a leader, is to be who we are. And being who we are is a choice. Yes. And how we treat people is also very important. So if you know who you are and you appreciate who you are, then you will be able to influence others that are under you or you are managing or you are leading. So that is very important. I also like the fact that you say something because sometimes we learn <laughs> different things, how we can top up the fuel in the tank, which is very important. Oh, we have true. to top it up because at a certain point, when you are driving, your petrol might be low or it finish. So if you don't top it up, you, st you are stuck and you are stand still. Oh, but you have to keep topping it up. And I think it's, also describe the growing mindset. So we can stand still and have a fixed mindset and want to change or transform our lives. But when you top it up with exactly what we are doing here today, listening and learning. So while we are learning, we are topping it up. And like I always say, learning is living. It's for life and it's a lifestyle. So while you right. are topping up your tank, filling up your tank, <laughs> you are learning and you are filling up your mindset. And it is also yes. very important that we know how we correct or how we speak to others. Because the way you speak to others or you are correcting them matters. That will determine how they will respond. <clears throat> to the message you are putting across them. So that That's is right. also very... <laughs> That's very true. Very true. So thank you so much, sir. We really My appreciate pleasure. you. This is Honorable Sir Ross Keith Swine from Singapore. Did I, did I hear you say you are, you are originally from Australia? Did I'm Australian, yes. Uh, yeah, I'm Australian. Uh, Ah, ah, but you are based in Singapore, which yeah, one day I will come moment. and visit you over there. <laughs> Feel free, Elizabeth. Feel so free. We, for the past one hour, we've been listening to our great leader in the world, in the society, Sir Ross Swine, teaching us about this wonderful, from, uh, from his wisdom. And I want to believe all our audience because I'm, I'm checking, I'm seeing people are joining and they are making some comments. I was waiting for them to ask questions, but they are just being enjoying your teaching. So I hope they understand what you've done. You've taught uh, us this rough. morning. Because <laughs> yeah. they are just excited. They're telling us they're from Malaysia, they are from mm. India, they are from Nigeria, yeah. they are from Essex here, yeah. they are from Georgia, they are from Croatia. So I just want to believe that they've learned a few things from mm. your wisdom and knowledge this afternoon, this morning, in this evening. I also have one of my, my mentor, my, my teacher, and also one of our Yes, you can international patron joining us just about a few minutes ago because sometimes 
I allow them to join us so that they will exactly know what I am doing. They are my leaders. <laughs> <laughs> so I have Keep Bishop, Bishop Pastor Nelson from Australia and also originated from Pakistan. So thank you for joining us, sir. We really appreciate you. I also have uh, Sir King Clive Rivers is also one of our grand patron. So I'm privileged to have him with us and also is going to share for the next 45 to 50 minutes. Um, so feel free, sir, to still be with us if you, because I know you are very busy. I'm talking about, I'm talking to you, <coughs> sir, sir Royce. If, I know you are very busy. If you can, you can also feel free to relax with us for the next one hour while we learn from um, our, our, our leader, um, Sir Clyde Rivers. And uh, if you have any other things that you want to do, sir, we cannot hold you. So, because I know you are coming back tomorrow. So anytime you are free, sir, you can leave us if you have something else to do. But if you stay with us till we finish, we also appreciate it, sir. Thank you so much. Okay, let me do something quickly.